On yesterday's video, there was a great question about some of the code there that probably confused quite a few people and upset a couple others. Today, I wanna to show you exactly what that code is, how it works, and how it can save you a lot of time, and also show you a couple pitfalls to watch out for. The specific code that I'm referring to is this link query. They asked, does anyone have an overview of the select where distinct to list bit? That seems interesting. And what they're talking about is right here. I was doing an ability system or showing an ability system where we grabbed all of the characters in range and just used a quick link statement to find all of the colliders that had been hit by my overlap sphere, which technically should be an overlap sphere, non-alloc. That's what writer's recommending right there. I'm not going to hit alt enter and change it though, because the focus is on lines 21 through 25, where we get into the link statement. That's what this is called. This is link. It's the language integrated query system. It's been in C sharp and well, since I think like 2.0, a very, very long time. And it's really commonly used, but not so much for game development for a couple of reasons that we'll talk about. But there are some really big benefits to using it. So I recommend that you try it out and understand it. And first, most importantly, be able to read it. But second, know when and where you can use it to make things nice and simple. So here I've got all of the colliders that were in range of the position that my player clicked. So I click want to do an AOE ability and I find all of the overlapping colliders. Then I wanted to find all of the colliders that have a character on them because there could be colliders that have other things, random items, scene objects, or whatever else, and there's no layer check here. So I want to filter it down to just characters. To do that, I can use the dot select method, which will actually return back my characters, but only in the scenarios where there are is a character, so where the character is not null. So what this is actually doing is it's going through every collider that's in the overlap, it's selecting their server character and putting it into a temporary variable here, and then we're checking to make sure that that server variable is not null, or that server character is not null in the next line right here, line 23. I'm going to show you how you can chain these together and use them distinctly down below. I've got a, a couple little examples that are a little bit simpler, but I wanted to hit this one first. Then we do the dot distinct method, which just is going to filter it down again to make sure that all of the characters are, there's only one of them there. And that's because we could theoretically have multiple colliders on a character and then get that collider parsed multiple times and get multiple characters. And you can probably see where that's somewhat inefficient, right? There are probably some better ways to optimize this, but in this scenario, optimization is not a big deal. And then finally, at the end, we call dot to list, which just converts this I enumerable query into something that's actually a list of objects. So let's look first at how this all works and then a bunch of examples. The way that this works underneath the hood is that it's creating a bunch of or adding a bunch of extension methods. If I hold control and click on one of these, you see that there are a ton of extensions methods here and they all start with this i or this system collections generic i enumerable and then t source which is the type of source so it works on i enumerables or essentially collections of objects and it allows you to do querying filtering and selecting and reshaping of data as well so let's go down a little bit further beyond what was in the original code this was the actual code down here i've got a couple examples to show how you could use this in a a uh, more simple scenario or, or some other scenarios where you're not chaining so many together and then how you can chain them together. So on line 27, you see this is where I was taking damage. I would loop through all of the characters in range, call a method called take damage on them. Another alternate thing you can do with link queries is call dot for each on a collection. You give it a lambda statement and then the T is going to be the character or the thing that you're getting there. So for each character in here, T will be character one, character two, character three, or so on, whatever index you're using. And then in this for each loop, it actually reduces the health of each of them by the damage amount. Another way to do what this is doing, just showing how you can do it in link. Not going to do that, of course, because I like my take damage method more. Next, I've got a dead characters collection. So I've got an IE numerable of server characters. I want to find all of the characters that are dead. Let me split this into two lines so it's a little bit more readable. Here you can see I have characters in range, just that same collection of characters. And then I do a dot where, and I filter it based on the current health being less than or equal to zero. This will give me back a collection of dead characters that I could do whatever I want with. If I want characters by distance, so I want the ones that are 
closest to me first, followed by all the ones in order by distance going out to the furthest, I can do an order by. So here I've got characters by distance equals characters in range, order by, and here we do a vector three dot distance. Notice that little T there. It's a little bit hard to see. Rider kind of obfuscates it, but it's nice because it shows you what it actually is. It's a server character right there. And we do it a distance check. That's going to figure out the distance and then order them by that distance for each character. So we'll get back a collection that's ordered by distance, of course. And then if I wanted like the closest warrior, I could just use characters by distance and call the first or default method. You've probably seen this one a lot. It finds the first thing that matches your query. A lot of the time there's nothing in the query. It's just first or default, which just returns back the first item out of the list or null or whatever the default value is for the type. Here though, I've added a query into it, which is something that you, you should see a lot of first or default with some queries in there. It'll find the first thing that matches that setup. So here we're finding the first character that has a class value matching warrior that's in our characters by distance. So it's going to find the closest one because it's going to go through that list in order and find the one that's that's first. And then finally, I've got a, or second to finally, I've got a closest dead warrior, which just kind of does the same. But here I've got all of the characters by distance and we're doing a query where we put two things in there. So we check to see, we find the first one that's a warrior whose health is also less than or equal to zero. You can combine these statements with just a double ampersand there. You can also do things like ors in there, combine them, build up bigger queries and stuff. I try not to make them too complicated though because it can get hard to read. One of the goals of Link is that it makes it very easy to read, also very easy to change and modify without having to do big code refactors. The last one I've got down here is the most experienced cleric, which just finds all the cleric characters in range where they're a cleric. So here we filter down to only look at clerics. Then we order them by their experience, but we order them descending, so the highest value first, and then find the first or default one. Now we could do this the other way where we did a where or an order by uh, of the experience value and then do a first or default one that matches the class. But then we'd actually be ordering and filtering all of the characters when we really just want to order the characters that are cleric. So it's slightly more performant to do it this way. Now let's talk about performance because one of the biggest concerns and things that you're going to see as a, a pushback against using Link is that it's not great for performance. And that, in a lot of cases, is true. If your code is running something that's in the hot path where it's an update method, something that's getting called constantly or multiple times per frame especially, a link query is probably going to cause problems. And it's not always going to be a performance-related problem like the CPU is causing an issue. It's just too slow. A lot of the time you'll find that link queries actually write code that's faster than what a lot of typical programmers, right? If you're good at optimizing, you can definitely outdo it. But most people, I'd say the link query ends up writing something that's a little bit faster. But what it does do is cause memory allocations, which leads to garbage collection. And in games, that can be a big issue. Now, if, again, if it's not in the hot path, it's something that's happening at initialization time or just every once in a while, probably not going to matter. But what you should do is profile. You should definitely look at the profiler, look at the memory allocations for your code, and you're going to find that there are going to be cases where your link queries are allocating memory and they're causing problems. They're allocating memory every frame or something like that, or regularly, and it's a decent amount. Usually it's a small amount, but it's just when it happens often, it's a problem. What you should do there is profile it, find those queries, rip them out or replace them and refactor them with something else, but then profile again and make sure that you actually fix the problem. It's easy to rewrite and remove the link query, but accidentally leave something in that's causing similar allocations, especially if you're not already great at performance and optimization. So with that said, I think that you should look into link queries, look at the documentation on it a little bit, start experimenting with them a little bit. Also, don't forget to check out the to list method. That's what this characters by distance is recommending that I do a to list here on this so that it doesn't have to loop through each time because here on each one of these queries, it's actually looping through and redoing these distance checks. If I put them into a list, it'll push them over, save them in that ordered list, and then the next queries will be a little bit faster. Again, hope this was helpful. If so, um, please don't forget to 
subscribe, hit thumbs up and all that stuff. And also, if you're um, interested in the second question that popped up, which was, are you going to be covering any form of persistence in your multiplayer coverage with the dedicated server segment? Or is that too far out of scope? It's about the multiplayer mastery course. The answer to that is definitely yes. That's actually, I, I didn't even think to mention it. It's the first thing that we cover is character creation, create a character from the client. Well, first thing we cover in the second part, in the dedicated server part, which is kicking off right about now. So we cover um, creating a character from the client, picking your character, getting your character list, picking your class and all that, and then logging in, the server loads your client from the database and it loads it all up, gets all your persistent stuff, and then you go in, pick up some items, kill some NPCs, kill other players, and then get out. And of course, all of that stuff is saved. Well, it's saved if you make it out. If you don't make it out, well, I guess it's still saved, but you just lose you lose your stuff. So typical, um, a typical flow there for that stuff. So there is persistence. There's lots of other stuff. Um, and we have meetings um, every odd day of the week. We talk about this stuff and go over all of the different things that are that are going in there and that we're covering. It's been a lot of fun. If you're interested in multiplayer stuff, you want to learn multiplayer game development, um, now is definitely the time. Just go to game.courses slash MP or use the link in the description. And if you're not, that's fine too. Just let me know what you are interested in in the comments and I'm going to keep doing as many videos as possible and answering as many questions as possible. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.